Oh, I've got a banger for you today. I haven't been this excited about a video in years. I'm gonna show you how I made all of this without any clay. To kick us off, let's hear from one of the most iconic innkeepers of all time, Winthrop. My hotel's as clean as an elven arse. Boudmore, let's go to the tavern. And remember that our sponsor is Heroes Horde for you 3D printers out there. Excellent selection, including all True Tiles lines. Easy stuff first, cheese wheels. These are paper straws found at any Dollar Tree or party store or grocery store probably for a buck. Simply inject one full of hot glue, stand it upright and hold as it fully hardens and cools, and then start slicing little bits off these will be the cheese wheels. On a few of them, I cut them in half or cut out a quarter of them to make a Pac-Man shape. Base coat them with white paint. I stuck them to some upside down masking tape and hit them with my airbrush to make the process very quick and easy. And after that paint is bone dry, I washed it with a yellow wash. This is Games Workshop Cassandora Yellow. There you go, miniature cheese wheels. Turkey legs, one of my real favorite foods. Take a paper clip, ideally the thick vinyl coated kind, and unfold it, and just dabble a little bit of hot glue onto one end. Work it around into sort of a globule shape, and then when you're happy with it, dip it in water so that it insta-cools and hardens. Then snip away the excess paper clip. I did spray prime some of these, but I skipped it for others and you really don't need to spray prime. Just lay on a real thick single coat of a bone color and set it to dry on a silicone mat, or if you don't have one, some wax paper would work as well. By the way, for the rest of the video, I'm gonna say silicone mat. Whenever I do, it means silicone mat or wax paper, whatever you have. Then once that's dry with a dark brown, paint the actual meat portion, and then just wash it down with sort of an earth colored brownish wash. Tie it all together. Again, set on silicone to dry. And while we're at it, let's make some fruits. Real easy, on your silicone mat, just dribble out a little bit of glue from your hot glue gun. Don't touch it to the paper. Have it a few millimeters above the paper so the glue drips down and forms a sort of spherical globule. To eliminate the wisp at the end, give your glue gun a quick couple twirls like you see me doing here. That kills the wisp. Then just let them dry. And once again, I set them on upside down masking tape and use my airbrush to paint them. I did a red, a purple, a green, and a yellow. Little tip from experimentations not shown on video, don't use blue, just exclude blue. I want a cozy, warm tavern. And when it looks like a rainbow, um, well, it just wasn't the look I was going for. So if you're trying to replicate this, skip blue. And then still on the tape, I went ahead and washed them down with a corresponding wash color. As it turns out in the end, this wasn't really necessary, but every little bit of depth helps. Cakes. Let's take some chipboard, very, very thick card stock. This is the stuff you'll find at the back of a notepad, or you can buy it in bulk like I do. There's links in the video description below. And anyway, we'll take this chipboard with a standard office hole punch and punch out three pieces. Stick them together with a little bit of white glue. Paint the outside with a dark brown. Paint the top with a tan. And give a little red dot in the middle for like the cherry. Well, there you go, sweet cake. Loaves of bread. Once again, back to the silicone mat. Like the fruit, we're going to dribble some hot glue on a little more this time in sort of an oval shape. Once again, twist the gun at the end to kill the wisp and let this fully harden and cure. Then I took my retractable knife and with the, the back side of the blade, the non-sharp side, I pressed in the score marks. The hot glue actually keeps its shape when you do this. Obviously, don't push so hard that you cut all the way through. And I did some with slanted hatches and some with crisscrosses. I think they both look good in their own way, so do what you want. Anyway, I stick those on some upside down masking tape, base coat them with a yellowish brown, and then wash it down with some army painter tone. This will dull that brownish yellow and it will get into the score marks and give us the look that we want. Voila, miniature loaves of bread.
Look at these miniature bases. These are from Games Workshop. They're the kind that have a taper to them on the rim and the underside is hollow. So used upside down, they make a pretty good tray. Thing is, I'm out of them. So I went to my 3D printer and whipped up a batch of them. And while I was at it, I also printed up some little 15 millimeter plates. So I got serving trays and I got actual plates. Those just get a base coat in gunmetal. How about drinking cups or mugs? Here are some thin stirring drinking straws, plastic. I'm gonna hit them with God's gift to humanity, Rust-Oleum 2X flat gray primer, and then a solid base coat with gunmetal. Then I just slice off a few millimeters at a time, and these are cups. Tables. I finally have a use for these great wooden circular bits that I've had in my storage box for years. Also these cone looking, I don't know what you call these, but they're gonna be perfect for a base for the table. I don't wanna do legs. They're gonna be so fragile in storage and the eye is gonna be drawn to the food on the table anyway. This is so much easier. So I'll just attach it with hot glue to the bottom. You can paint this up with the wood kit of your choice. I'm using watered down folk art asphaltum. I also wanna make a long table for the center of a large tavern or it's modular. It could be used like maybe in a dwarven feast hall or something later on. So I have these jumbo popsicle sticks. Just gonna take two of them and attach them together lengthwise underneath and two pedestals for supports. Paint it up exactly as before. Tables, good to go. The bar. I'm going back to my rip-off Jenga blocks that I've used multiple times in the past few videos. Two of them I stick together end to end and a third to make an L shape. Where their seams are I cover with these crafting picks. Just more wood products. Could also use coffee stirrers. Whatever. The bar top is more of those jumbo sized popsicle sticks. I cut a nice miter at the corner so it looks nice. That just gets stuck on with hot glue. That's the bar painted up just like before. And I also trimmed them out with a couple of neat decals from my leftover 40K collection. And look at these three little jars. Most hobby crafting stores have a dollhouse and or fairy garden section, and that stuff is too big for our 28 millimeter scale, but there are other uses for it. I'm gonna pull these stoppers out and use these little beads and the vegetables, whatever they are. So I laid out piles of all the foods that I had made and mentally planned how much I would need for each table. Pretty much divided it evenly, and then went about having probably the most fun I have ever had crafting stuff. Assembling the serving trays and the plates was a zen thing. Man, and it was so, it was instant reward. It was so, so gratifying. Now, when all was said and done, it looked fine. It's colorful like I like, but all these elements just glued together just don't quite, there's something missing. Can't explain it. I'm not sure how to explain it, but I anticipated this, and so I also assembled a dummy serving tray, which I could experiment on if needed, and sure enough, it is. I just want everything to look a little more tied together, so I'm gonna use some Army Painter Light Tone. Not strong tone, not soft tone, not mid-brown, but light tone. And I slathered this all over my test tray. I did this to ensure that despite the thickness, it would dry and everything would have some nice warm shadow to it, but also without a glossy finish, which sometimes happens if you don't mix up your washes correctly. And a few hours later, once I'd proven that was the case, I dove in. I washed everything with Army Painter Light Tone. But what this also does is it sort of collects around the base of all the trays and the cups. And when that dries, it's sort of like ambient occlusion, a little bit of a shadow around them. I, I don't know how else to explain it. It just makes everything look a little more tied together. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison, washed and unwashed. Of course, it's wet, so it's gonna look subtler when it dries. But by and large, this was the right thing to do. You'll see in the Grand Tour at the end. Here's how I did these tiles in under two hours, believe it or not. I've got these coffee stirrer sticks. They happen to be four of them put together equals one inch wide. So I took some food box card stock and on the brown paper product side, painted a layer of white glue, then began snapping these on one by one in a big long row. Only took about a minute or two. And then heavy books on top for about an hour. As for the foundations, I used more of this wainscoting hardboard I talked about in my dungeon tile video, 
but you certainly could use uh, corrugated cardboard, cladding up the edges, and that would work fine too. But regardless, I'm going to base it black. And now going across my dried stirrer sticks, I measure out lines one inch apart. Then cut out strips, four sticks at a time, like this. These sticks are fairly thin, so good hefty scissors like kitchen shears lops right through them. So getting this dried mass all cut up into one inch squares, total of about 10 minutes of actual effort. And I think I did six batches of these. From there, it's simply a matter of hot gluing the squares onto the foundation, alternating them, and making sure that the top left corner of every tile is, is oriented the same way. That way, as long as you have an even numbered squares on your tiles, you'll never have any repeats. And painting up as usual, beginning with watered down folk art asphaltum. And then I wanted these to be a little bit different than my furniture, a little bit darker. So I'm gonna play with some brown ink, brown acrylic ink, a couple squirts of that, and then just one or two drops of black ink. Goes a long way, darkens it down a lot plus a little bit of water. And then I'll wash the whole thing down with this. And much like a real wood stain, lightly blot off some of that excess. Gives it a beautiful, beautiful wood finish. Look at that. In my opinion, there is no substitute for actual wood, both in terms of the overall look and the raw speed with which you can get it done. So I made 12 of these four by four inches in under two hours. Now, a few videos ago when we did books and furniture, I showed you how I use old decals to sort of put artwork on the furniture and just zhuzh it up a little bit. I also used that same old potion formula, assorted rainbow glass beads with Toho seed beads glued on as stoppers. However, this, mm, I'm just tired of looking at it. Something about it doesn't tie together well. I think the white decals are too much. I think the subtler versions of the colors that the bottles are don't jive with the rich colors of everything else that's on the board. So I took the opportunity to just try something brand new, different way to do bottles and or potions. Even us YouTube creators go to other YouTubers for inspiration. I'm drawing from Dark Matter Workshop here, card on the screen. Still using those beads of various sizes and shapes, but this time with toothpicks. If needed, I cut off a little bit of the pointed end of the toothpick, but in general, they fit in by friction really well. No need to even glue, just a good amount of force and they're in there for good. Once again, upside down masking tape to hold them in place while spraying with primer. Then to my army painter paints to begin airbrushing. For the bar, I'm thinking I want whiskeys and wines. So I'm gonna stick to reds and beiges. Nice solid base coat of red, and then a darker red at the bottom, give it a little bit of a gradient. Some of them I painted up like brown ceramic and just gave them a wash with Army Painter Tone. These could be like, I don't know, jars of ale or something. And I assure you I'm not injured here. This is all just dried red paint in my fingernails. But for anything that's a glass bottle, I hit it with gloss varnish and then manually just paint on the top cork. I also attached these to the furniture with white glue, not super glue so that I wouldn't get any clouding effect like I did last time. And I went subtler with the decals, just one of them to match the ones that I put on the bar. Here they are side by side. I think it speaks for itself. One is much warmer, goes with everything else that I've made. And I think contributing to it is the fact that it's no longer mixed media. Everything is painted. I'm not sure why, but whenever I do mixed media stuff, it just never quite gels together. So this I am quite happy with. And we need a fireplace hearth. There are like dozens of videos from other likewise crafters who make hearths. I don't really have anything new to add to this topic. I cut two pieces out of foam. One is the back, one is the actual opening for the archway in which the fire will be. I textured these up with dungeon stone exactly like my dungeon tiles and painted them exactly like my dungeon tiles. So I can use them in a tavern or in a dungeon if I need to. It'll jive either way. Anyway, I'm not covering the painting here. You can go watch that video if you want to. Here's a square wooden dowel. I'm just gonna cut this to match the width of the hearth, give it the wood paint treatment and attach it. Here are some wooden dowels. I manually broke these to be, I don't know, half to three quarter inch long and painted them crudely with a dark brown. These will be the fire logs. Then on my silicone mat, I drizzled out jagged trails with hot glue, trying to come to a point at the end. Made a couple dozen of them, they peel right off, and by gluing them together in rows, sort of offset and at slightly different angles, you build sort of depth to the fire. And it's not bad, it's not great, 
but it's also not bad, especially for three minutes of work. To paint it, I base coated it with white with my airbrush, because there is no other way to paint white. Same with yellow, airbrushed solid yellow over the white. Then a medium dry brush with a beautiful orange. And a light dry brush with red. Wonderful. And let's talk about candles. Up till now, I've always used the DM Scotty method with toothpicks, but those were a little large for scale. And in the spirit of things, I thought I would try something new. Look at these beads. They're nice. They would work for candle holders, except they don't have a flat bottom. But with some clippers, they cleave away pretty easily. These are just plastic after all. So I flatten the bottom and with vinyl coated paper clips, clear away the top tip. That will be the flame and the rest is inserted into the bead and coated with a thick layer of white PVA glue. Not a piece of cake, kind of finicky, especially with calloused fat fingers like mine, but the end effect is mm, I'm happier with this than I am with my old candles. So a couple of these on the hearth to complete the look. And I'll mount something on the wall in the middle at some point, like a shield or a weapon, but I'm not sure what I want to do yet. It's a big decision. I only get one chance. So for now, I'm stopping here with this piece. Now at this point I set things up and filmed the grand tour, but I still wasn't happy with the overall look. It's missing something. Walls. So I made a few modular wall segments. I only need enough to occupy two walls because the other two will be open. I imagine myself at the table, behind the whole thing, and then the players in front. They don't need walls in front of them, but having ones in the back presents the illusion of being in the building. So these will be 3 by 4 inch rectangles two bits of chipboard and one bit of double corrugated cardboard in the middle with the corrugation running up and down. Assemble the sandwich with hot glue and then clad the outside with paper, or I think I'm using manila folder here. Very, very thin cardstock. Then come up with a design for the wall. I used Google image search to get some ideas for medieval tavern. And with my assorted popsicle sticks and coffee stirs and all this stuff, I just sort of assembled a lumber pile, enough to do all seven. Then I painted those up independently this is so, so much easier than trying to paint them once the wall is assembled. And while those are drying, I went ahead and base coated the wall with this antique parchment color. Two coats got the job done. Then I glued on my pre-painted wood products. And on one segment, I left a little bit of a sliver here exposed. This will be my corner piece. I should only ever have one corner. And this accounts for the offset of the wood on the other piece. Then I stained and aged the walls so they look kind of like stucco or something with my usual asphaltum orangey brown. Though any brown will work, it's just what look you're going for. Anyway, this is watered down pretty heavily. It's just a thin wash. And I slather it on there. Give it a moment because it will start to dry pretty quickly. Another benefit of chipboard. And then with a clean but still wet brush, I went back and wick away and sort of swirl away at the middle of the panel so that the aging is more concentrated on the perimeter of these panels, nearer to the wood. And from there, hold it upright so that any drippage goes downward due to gravity. Within a minute, this will be set. And due to the fibrous texture of the chipboard underneath, it does all the work of texturing for us. So this was literally a base coat and then a thin wash. One minute of effort. There's a little dragon charm I found at the craft store. Just gonna cut off the loop, spray prime it, paint it with a copper color, wash it down, and attach it to one of the walls. I also thought about cutting up Magic the Gathering commons and using the artwork as either like paintings or outdoor scenes for windows, but I can always go add those later. And then lastly, and most importantly, I cut some chipboard rectangles to act as stabilizing tabs. These are hot glued on, and this is why the corrugation needs to run up and down. It's gonna have plenty of place to seep into on the bottom and make this a very strong connection. This tab sits under the weight of the tile, keeping the wall in place, even when you bump the table. While I was at it, I made one of the walls have the door. This is the entrance to the establishment. So here you go, wall segments. Remember that washes dry subtler than they look wet. I tried a burnt umber wash and I mean, it doesn't look bad, but it's not the look I was going for. I like a little more saturation and vibrancy. If you're going to go about this method, I recommend you make a big swatch of the antique parchment and wash it down with a bunch of different browns. See which one you like.
I'll tell you what, I have learned the importance of trying new techniques and ideas. Longtime viewers will know that there's tricks and colors and techniques that I always go back to. And as a result, in some ways, I haven't really grown. And I'm talking specifically about my projects and the results. In some ways, it looks just like it did eight years ago when I first picked up a hot glue gun. And if I'm honest, I don't regularly step outside my comfort zone at the workbench. None of the stuff in this video came easy. It's presented here cleanly for you, but there was a ton of experimentation behind it. For example, I must have tried 20 or 30 browns till I found the exact right one I like for my wood. Those candles. I spent a night trying to refine the process, getting all that micro work done. All those food ideas. I actually did try clay to start with. I tried for several days. And in fact, you might see one or two pieces mixed in there that were made of clay, but 99% weren't. I just held on to them because the very few that came out usable, I figured why throw them away. But I am just not a born sculptor. But limitation breeds innovation. And look, you'll never be totally happy with your final product. You'll always find things you wish you'd done a little differently. Many folks fall into the trap mentality that they need to produce a movie caliber miniature building or else use nothing. You don't need to model your entire session. Also, when it comes to specifically miniatures crafting, it may not be as fun for you trying to build all of Castle Ravenloft. In fact, I contend that it's not the size or epicness that matters. It's the attention to detail and the novel techniques, a mantra which incidentally serves me well in other areas. My point is don't try to reproduce the projects you see people doing unless they excite you, unless you actually want to do them. This is something I only realized kind of recently. This is the same reason why you see my miniatures are painted at tabletop standard or tabletop minus at best. I don't enjoy miniature painting all that much. I refuse to spend time edge highlighting or glazing, so my paint jobs are very, very basic, but I'm happy with it. Hey, did you know that I've published some D&D modules? Well, it's true, and they're okay. They're not great, but they're not bad. You know, they're okay, and they're cheap. If you want to support me, go ahead and buy them, or use my Amazon affiliate links. No impact to you, I just get a little taste, or Patreon, or the fourth option, which I would prefer over the other three, click the subscribe button. A large percentage of you are not subscribed and it's throwing the algorithm all out of whack. Or the fifth thing you can do, more important than the other four, is to go on Facebook and join the Tabletop Crafters Guild. There's over 40,000 of us making miniature stuff to enhance our tabletop gaming. I am but one person. Thank you for watching today. I am Wylock Play... Uh, do it again. I am Wylock... Th Thank you for watch. <laughs> Thanks for watching today. I'm Wylock. Make things and I shouldn't do this. I Thanks for watching. I'm just edited a 25 minute video. Can't say one sentence. Thank you for watching today. I am Wylock. Make things and play games.